Hi everyone. Um, this is my November what I am going to sew video. I'm a little bit late but it doesn't really make much difference. I had a look at what I am going to sew and it won't make much difference if it's just a week late. Uh, I was reminded the other day that I hadn't done a video so <laughs> that's why I'm doing it and I'm so sorry. I think this is a new thing of mine that I'm doing what I'm sewing every month and I just oh gosh okay but it doesn't matter. Okay let's so let's start. So November it's November um, all around the world and in the UK uh, the weather is okay. I mean it's it's been very very wet but other than that, it's not too bad. Temperatures aren't too bad, so that's okay with me. So I've got a few things that I am going to be sewing in November to get me through to spring. Um, let's start from the beginning. The first thing that I'm going to sew, and it's only because I didn't have enough this year, are some red onions. Um, this is, uh, let me think. What variety is this? Uh, this is called electric. Um, in the springtime, I do red baron, but these are called electric. These are these are meant to be quite good for autumn sewing. Okay, so I'm not a big sewer of um, onions by sets in the autumn because I do find that they have a tendency to bolt, especially red onions. But this year, my red onions were um, attacked by Allium leaf miner, uh, which is a little bit unfortunate because the bed that I had that was, um, well, both of them were covered, but the other bed wasn't attacked at all by Allium Leaf Miner, and they had my um, yellow onions or brown onions, if you want to call them that, under there. So, so I am just going to sew this amount, and that's it. That should get me through a month. There's about 50, I think, in here. Maybe even more, but I'm just going to sew the whole lot. Um, and that will get me through a month where I'm not going to really have any red onions in store. That's it. The reason why I don't like sewing in the autumn is uh, in, in order for onions not to bolt, you really need consistent temperatures below 10 degrees Celsius. So, uh, and you can't really guarantee that especially. So I wouldn't have sewn these in October. I was thinking about it, but we did have a little patch in October where it got a little bit warmer. So I'm glad I didn't. November is really the best month to be sewing these um, red onion sets. So that's why I'm, I'm going to do one lot of those. The other thing um, that you can actually do until the end of the month is your garlic. I found this the other day. This is actually a very nice bulb of garlic. This is my own saved garlic. Um, and you can do it really until I would say end of end of November. I like to plant my garlic in October because it gets a better growing season for me. Um, but sometimes you don't have room in beds. And so now I'm going to, I will plant this. I'm, I'm going to dot it around as I find spaces and put some more in now. The other route um, to that you can sow now really in the first half of November are some carrots. Um, I just did a video, I'm going to um, release it on YouTube, where I sewed um, some carrots and you sew them in troughs or sew them in big containers and then put them in the greenhouse and they will overwinter very nicely and then you should be able to get your, some nice carrots in May, June time. Not really big ones, but you know, edible, nice edible ones. Um, the variety that I like is Napoli F1. You'll hear me banging on about this variety a lot. But it is a great variety I have found for cooler weather. Uh, you get decent size um, carrots from it and they're very, very tasty. So that's the other um, route that I am going to be sowing. Right, let's get on to some spinach. I'm going to do two lots of spinach. I'm looking down because I've got my notes in front of me. Um, I've already got some spinach. I've got two trays of spinach in the big greenhouse one is ready to go out in the garden and the other one is coming along quite nicely and both of those are the winter giant so they are going to be what we feed off in the winter the other spinach that i'm going to um sow now really for um for spring is um i've got two that i like to sow one is called responder it's an f1 
um, and that does really well at this time of year. Um, so what that is going to do, and the other one is called Rubino, and this has got the uh, red vein in it. Um, this has done really well this year, this Rubino. So, and again, another F1. Um, so I am going to um, sew them now in November, and then I will hopefully be able to take off some little leaves for salads. But in springtime, I will, that is when they then take over from the giant winter, which will be finished and which will be coming to bolt. But in springtime, um, they uh, will be ready to eat before they then bolt. So you usually find that in about the end of February, if you've got things overwintering in the garden, especially spinach, like the giant winter, end of February is where everything starts to grow again and you get bolting happening by March. Uh, I'm hoping that because I'm doing a late sowing of these two, um, that I will not get that. That would be good. I am only going to do about 40 of each, so I'll have about 80, 80 plants. Well, I won't, I'll have double that. Um, because I put two seeds per cell and then uh, they will be covered as well in the garden and they'll probably be covered by a, um, a tunnel or um, some kind of polythene over the top. So that is my spinach. Um, my third succession of uh, broad beans will be sowed. So um, I haven't got any seeds here. I didn't bring any seeds in with me, but they are the Aqua Dulce Claudia broad beans. So this is going to be for a later harvest. I've already got two successions of broad beans on the go. I've got ones in modules that are there, then going to be planted out into pots in the greenhouse. They're going to be the first really early ones, April April time. Then I've got some, I've got a bed over at the allotment already um, sown and I'm going to find, I'll, I'll find another little patch probably here in the kitchen garden uh, for my third succession of broad beans. Not many, I'm only going to um, do about 15 of them, small succession and then I have another succession in February that I plant as well because we do do love broad beans. Okay, I'm just going to get my brassicas ready. All right, so I am going to sow some brassicas. And uh, the reason I want to sow them now is I would like them in um, late March. The other ones that I've got in the garden at the moment or at the allotment will be pretty much used up and finished by that stage. Then I've got a gap and I don't actually have any uh, until about late May, early June, and that's my uh, January, February sowing. So I am going to put these in under cover. So I'm gonna put them on the, um, in the greenhouse on the allotment in amongst my lettuces that I've got in there. I will probably do a few in pots on these, in these greenhouses as well, if I can find the space. And they are, they're kind of just like my favorite brassicas really that I've chosen. There's a cabbage that I love, which is called Caraflex. It's an F1, it's a pointy, pointy cabbage. That is going in. Um, I've got quite a few kales here because we do love kale. Pentland Brig, great kale. That is a heritage variety. It's a cross between a dwarf green and one called Thousand Headed. Um, so that's that. The red, I've got two reds. I've got one called Sympathic, um, which is very good. And I've got also the Scarlet, which is another very good one. They, but they work differently, the two of them. The Sympathic's probably tougher. Um, I've got a, one called Dazzling Blue, a kale. Now this is a like a Cavallo Nero type of um, kale, but it has a pink ribbing inside. Obviously, the Cavallo Nero is going in. I'm going to do some dwarf green, which we always like. I've got a big bed of them out in the garden at the moment. So those are my um, brassicas that I'm going to do. So I'm going, what I'm going to do is I'm not going to do many of them. I'm only going to do about six of each and then um, put them in, uh, start them off in modules Put them in like nine centimetre pots. When they get quite established, then I will plant them in the um, poly, not poly tunnel. <laughs> I wish I had a poly tunnel. Um, I have got a little poly, I've got a little mini poly tunnel. They might actually even go over there as well, under that. 
lots of space for them or in the greenhouses. So they're going to be undercover. They are then going to come out definitely um, at the end of May because the tomatoes are going to then go in. So I'm hoping to kind of fill that gap with those. All right. Now let's talk about lettuce. So if you have grow lights or if you have some space inside that is very, very bright and sunny, you can do some lettuce now. You can actually get it germinated. Um, the beauty of having grow lights, and they look, then they can come very cheap or very expensive, but the beauty of having grow lights is that you can actually grow lettuce all year round. Uh, you don't need long underneath the grow lights. You really only need them under there for about 10 days or so, and then you take them out. But like I said, if you have a very, very bright windowsill, um, then that should work as well. So uh, what I'm going to do is I am going to um, germ start these now, and then I plan on putting these um, outside, either under cover, under a, a, a tunnel, or in my greenhouses in January, February time. These are going to be harvested as, as harvested as a whole head. Because what you find with lettuce, lettuce stops growing in the winter. So if you're taking off leaves, just be really careful with doing that. I would say in December, December, January, February time. February not so bad, but just definitely December and January because the plant stops growing. So you're not going to actually get any more growth. Um, you'll have a head, a tiny little head in there, but nothing's growing. So you really need at that, that time of year for uh, end of winter, I'm thinking, end of winter, you really need heads to harvest. And so these are going to be the heads that I'm going to be harvesting. And I'm hoping that I'm going to be harvesting these because I've already got one lot in that I'm going to be harvesting in uh, January, February. I hope to be harvesting these in April and May, the whole heads. Um, these are going to probably relate, uh, replace all of my Asian greens, which will be bolting by that stage. And uh, these are the varieties that I have chosen for this time of year. The first one is Winter Density. This is a really good, uh, as the name says, it's a great, um, uh, what do you call it, lettuce for winter. Um, it's a cos type of lettuce. That's my first one. The second one, uh, I've got a red and I've got a, a green, is the Lolo's. Lolo Bionda, that's another really good one for the winter. Um, and I also have the Lolo Rossa. That's another really good one for the winter. They are going in. Uh, there, so there's two of these that I like. One is called Maravilla de Canasta, and but I have this Maravilla de Verano, which is a really good um, uh uh, what do you call it, lettuce as well. It's a Batavia type of lettuce, so it's got a nice head on it. That's a great one. Flashy butter oak, only because I love it. I love this lettuce and it's an oak leaf and I'm going to do that. And my favourite, Navara, which is another oak leaf. So those, like I said, are going to be sown now and then you can actually, if you want to, you can keep them in nine centimetre pots if you want to over the winter and just hold them. In, in your greenhouses because uh, they, they're they not gonna grow much, but then they'll be ready to actually put out if you wanna put them in the ground or keep them in bigger pots um, for later on. So that is my, that's um, November. That's my November sowings. That is gonna take me to the end of the month. I plan on sowing all of this stuff, I would say, but it, by at least the, end of the third week of November, this will all be sown. And then we, then I start thinking about what I'm going to do in December. And yes, I do sow in December as well. <laughs> I sow, actually, I sow all year round. It, you know, it slows down, of course, but I do um, sow all year round. So um, yeah, if you're going to do that, then follow, if you want to do the moon phase gardening, then by all means, please have a look at my moon phase gardening schedules every week and you can work out what uh, days you will be um, sowing your seeds um, makes it easier for you. And I will see you then next month in December for our December sowings. Happy gardening for November.